That Jesus was the first oh, one. I'm the first one. <laughs> How you doing? So listen, it's not a requirement to do it. Do you do you want to you want to try yeah, the role yeah, play yeah. first, and then I'll yeah. answer any questions you got? And uh, the we'll, idea is to help you out, guys. I'd rather you role play with me than like if you have a paid list or a customer like that, because it's really nerve wracking then. So yeah. And Jesus, yeah. don't be nervous about it because everybody learns. I wish the God somebody did with this to me mm -hmm. um, when I was a lot when I first got started. Nobody did. Yeah. Unfortunately, I spent a lot of customers like trying to figure this out. So here's what I want to talk about. Have, so have you done a deal yet, Jesus? No. Okay. Am I pronouncing your name correct? Yeah. Okay. Where are you located? I'm in Florida. Oh, really? What part? Yeah. Uh, I'm in uh, Martin County. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. You throw a rock at me, couldn't yeah. you? <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, surprised I'm here because I, so. I have this uh, Fizbo in uh, Chobe. Okay. And it looks, the numbers look real good. And if and if I'm able to like, uh, bring it down, and uh, it, it looks like a real good... Uh, uh, Simon deal. Yeah. Okeechobee's an interesting place because it's yeah. got a mix of obviously residential. Oh, yeah, yeah, you have yeah. a lot of marine and agricultural. There's like, so everybody, every time I go out there, somebody wants to sell me a hundred acres every time I go. I'm just like, because it, it's the, the problem with Okeechobee is trying to price everything out there because it's so unique and different. I've bought some okay. wild stuff out there, but like oh, I also okay. own some wild stuff out there that I couldn't get. Oh, <laughs> um, anyways, um, so what got you interested in wholesaling? Uh, honestly, I fell for a guru trip. Trapped. Uh -oh. I'm not even gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> Was it so, off uh, TikTok, YouTube? Don't give a name, but uh, YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah. How, so, how deep are you in the hole? I'm all the way, <laughs> all the way down. Just throw a number. How what ah. would you spend on it? Yeah. Okay. And yeah. no help, right? No. Nope. But uh, yeah, I'm looking to make that back. Oh, don't worry. Crazy. I lost my first 5K, and uh, I've done very well since then. So sometimes, right, right after, I, unfortunately, I, I I don't want that to happen to anyone. But sometimes, yeah. when you take a loss up front and you find out people don't deliver what they say, it, it is huge fuel for you. Mm -hmm. So but yeah, uh, the good right thing after is I'm I'm doing this for free for you. So he paid somebody else and i'm gonna teach jesus how to do this for free it's exactly so. and and it's crazy because right after i had joined i was looking up wholesaling on youtube and then i found you guys and, then, and it's like oh they do it for free yeah no yeah and like we do it for real like so you yeah, saw the other person's that's, course of yeah. mine is it like night and day uh no, I don't I was, hide a damn thing in my course, guys. Like, I just tell you how it is. Nobody can believe me. Like, there's no way you can do it. I go, I already told all you guys, if, you want, if you're on this thing and you're thinking about buying a course, check out freewholesaling.com because you get to see everything under the hood before you spend a dime. And you, I'm still not going to ask you to spend uh -huh. a dime. Try that with any guru's course. I guarantee until your credit card swipes and they processes it, you don't get to see a damn thing. And it's, yeah. <laughs> it's all by design, guys. Like, why not give you a test ride for like seven days? in the course so i give you an unlimited test ride so whatever D dude just use it as fuel dude i got just yeah. so everyone knows yeah this, this i've been yeah. screwed probably by a dozen like gurus not, not all bad but like when i say screwed is people try to teach me a topic that they didn't even fully understand and I bought into the marketing because I used to have, I, when I was making a lot of money, I go, okay, this guy for 20 grand, this guy for 30 grand, all like pie in the sky. Very rarely have they ever worked out. And yeah. I'm just like, why we make this so complicated? It's so freaking simple. It's just, you find people that need to sell their properties and you just put it all together. And no one will tell you the truth about this business. It's not easy. Yeah. But like once you figure it out, it's really not hard either. You just, you got to do what nobody else is willing to do. And that's the truth. The reality is if I get a hundred people to tune in to go to my course, five or ten will knock it out of the park mm -hmm. why because not everybody's built for wholesaling and i know that yeah yeah but if you talk to a guru his course or her course will fix all problems and that's honestly when you bought the course you felt like it was a complete relief right like yep. oh yeah i'm gonna like my life right? is gonna change <laughs> and then about three to four weeks into it, you're like oh crap i'm getting nothing here and now they're doing the dance around and eventually they're gonna lock me out of this course uh -huh. and let me ask you do you have a lifetime access to that course no no it's uh yeah. after it ended it's like 200 a month just just don't being give, uh don't give any names. yeah 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 just like, being their little thing. yeah Okay. So you had to get some skill sets out of it. Like I, I believe oh, yeah. you got a lesson no, out of it. That's for sure. Yeah. But, I got, I got um, pretty much the basics down. It's just the talking. That's all it is with me. So what I want to do is I want to work on specific strategies. So w listen, we're all really good till it gets down to the negotiation. Like that's where everybody kind of goes, man, Rick, I get this pit in my stomach and I keep talking until like, I don't even want to talk about the price because I'm scared to death. And I'm here to tell you that it's natural. I've gone through the 
whole thing. So what you have to do is have some strategies in your hip pocket. So when that awkward negotiation comes up, you can drop the bomb and not get kicked out of the house. That's the only goal of our conversation here. Okay. So let me ask you this. Have you tried, uh, do you understand good cop, bad cop? Yes. You ever heard about it, right? Yeah. Uh, you guys are my bad cops. <laughs> Correct. You and, you and so Zach. guys, good cop, bad cop squares. So Jesus, if you're in front of the seller, which one are you? I'm the good cop. You always have to be the good cop when you're standing in front of that. You got to be the likable person, the reasonable person. My partner, Rick, he's nuts. <laughs> he sit behind a desk. He's got nothing better to do but crunch numbers. I don't agree with everything he's saying. And like, you have to act like you're the intermediary of trying to make this work. So let's paint a scenario. Okay. Say um, the lady wants 200,000 for her house. You can't pay more than a buck. You can't pay more than 155. That's like your MAO. So you and me had this like, Zeus, like, don't pay a dime more of that and show me you're the hero. That's what I used to do with my son. I go, you're not paying a dime more than that and show me the hero. All right. and so everybody wants to come back and go, I got it for a hundred. <laughs> Never works that way. So what you have to do is do the good cop, bad cop. So if it's 200, you got to find a way. So say you've built great rapport and you're having a conversation. Now you got to make the offer. So if you understand one, you can't do more than 155. That's it. That's your max. Yeah. If it's more than 155, it doesn't work. We won't even get into the repairs or conditions is how do you do the good cop, bad cop to present that offer? So I'm going to be Janet, the mm -hmm. seller. And I want you to use the good cop. Remember, you're, you're not going to do anything wrong. I just want you to get through it. Dad. And then we'll correct it a little bit. And I'll let you try it one more time. And then if everybody understands how good cop, bad cop works, remember the good cop, you're taking the stress off of you and you're putting on this crappy person that you're stuck with. Mm -hmm. And then when I go dark as the seller, you have to save the deal. No, 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 Janet. Like, so remember, I, I agree with you. I, and here's my favorite words. I'm on your side. I'm on your but side. It's got to make sense. Yeah. My partner says, says we can't pay more than this. And here's the secret. I'm not going to tell you everything. 155 is the MAO. And I promise you, after this five minute exercise, you're going to be very happy because it's you, once you understand how to do this, like you can go to your hip pocket because in a day or two, yeah, it's going to be there. this exact same scenario and you got to do it. So here we go. We're into the conversation. We've already done full conversation. We, we've done we've done all the qualifying. You know she's qualified. Sell the price. We just got to get it for the right price. If you pay more than one fifty five, you're going to be in huge trouble. Yeah. So here we go. Hey, listen, hey Zeus, I like everything you present. Um, can you do two hundred? Two hundred. Uh. I don't even. <laughs> okay, how how should this go? You, so I'm trying to put you on the spot because yeah. this is how it works. So you got one or two choice. You go. Uh -huh. you know what? In the perfect world, 200 probably works fine. Okay. But you know we got a few issues here, and you know you told me you wanted a quick sale. I tell you what, let me let me do this. Yeah. Let me just. So if you're uncomfortable, you can break it up. Do you mind if I just check with my partner real quick? That'll give you a break to kind of gather. You got to be careful of that. Yeah. Just go over and have like a 30 second break. You don't even have to talk to him. Just talk to the. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then once you do that, she's going to stare you right in the eye and she's waiting to hear what your partner had to say. So you're going to be forced to spit it out. I only do that is if you're uncomfortable pulling out the bad cop right off the bat because I could tell you were. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm giving you that out. So Jesus, listen, I think it's worth 200. Can you know what? What can you do? I know you probably can't quite pay 200. You got to make a little bit of money, but will 200 work for you? Well, considering that you wanted a quick sale and, you know, the, on what the property looks like uh my partner rick he's, he's, he's a real numbers guy and and the number he came back to me with was 150. are you nuts i'm so on you're your side, to offer yeah. 150 on it no 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 this is not me this like i said it's my partner rick he's, he's a crazy guy i know i say the same thing to him uh but 150 so is what we're at Okay, so let's take a break here. So remember, if your maximum allowable offer is 155, you start at 150. You, you're you're almost standing on the cliff to start with. Okay, yeah, that's where I was unsure of. Because I like, lower. So you remember the go for no strategy means you oh, build yeah. enough rapport, you're confident you're not going to get kicked out the door, but you're you're going to get punched. Mm -hmm. The idea is you just don't want to get punched out the door. So yeah. you can never. This is the biggest problem everybody has when they're dealing with motivated sellers. Everybody offers too much, and you're offering a price based on what 
what you think the sellers this. So honestly, if I was, say I was your boss and you were my acquisition, I go, listen, you can't pay more than 155. The last thing you can do is start out with an offer at like 150. Okay. Yeah. You got to come in at like below your kneecap. So if you guys do not trust your lips, which I didn't when I first started, uh -huh. take whatever offer you're going to do and minus off 30 grand right off the bat. So you were going to offer 150. So go, I'm going to do the $30,000 effect with Rick. I'm going to take off 30. I'm off her 120. You know, you're going to get lit up. That's yeah. when you bring in the bad cop. Okay. Go listen. So let's try it from there. I'll blow up on you. And then you have to repair the damage with the seller. You know, so my partner's a little bit nuts, but he has looked at the numbers. I might have some room. And okay. then you are looking for the counter. Okay. So yeah. many of you guys are looking for a yes on the first offer and you're going to get killed on that. You don't want to do that strategy. So listen, Zeus, I, you know, I think it's worth roughly about 200. I know you guys got to make a little bit of money on it, but I think that's a, a fair, accurate assessment number. So, you know, what, what are you thinking about offering me on it? Well, my partner, Rick, he's a, he's a real numbers guy and he came and he crunched them real good. And he came back with uh 120 is what we could do. I'm sorry. What'd you say? 120. Dude, who's this Rick guy? Are you, are you guys nuts? He, no, no, Did no. He's my smoke <laughs> something before you got here. <laughs> no, he's, he's a crazy guy, but 120, but I could, I could, I could do something for you. If, if you could meet me in the middle somewhere from your 200. Okay. So never say the middle right off the bat. Cause now uh -huh. you're pointing, you, you want to get their authentic answer. Okay. So so this is where you have to just sit back and go, listen, Rick's a little bit nuts. He is good with the numbers. That's why I keep him in the office with the money. I agree with somebody you're saying, but I'm trying to find out if we can work something out. So basically you've already told, you know, 120, what, what, what can you, you know, what do you think? Like, so now you got to volley it back to him and you got to yeah. let her give the number. You can't give the number. And then just where she's going to say, well, this is where you're looking for. I go, listen, I talked to my husband and we can never take anything less than 146 six thousand dollars so you know what this means is now your range is 146 to 120 and now guess what is just now you're negotiating before yeah. you're just talking now you have the range the question is can you dial it in most likely you probably talk her at 140 or below and remember if i was your boss or your partner i said 155 works you always want to go back and prove the value of having a conversation with people so if you start at or near the mao you have nowhere to go with that client so at the end if you we so say we haggle and now I wind up at like 140. You make me feel special as a seller because like I like we all like you worked your way up. Mm -hmm. The problem is the minute you tell me like 150 something, I know that's the least. I know that's the least amount I'm going to get for the property. So you size up, I size up. Here's how I look at it. When they give me the counter offer, I know that's the maximum I want to pay if I want a no haggle price. I know they're not going to take 120. So the reality is we're probably between... 125 and 145 at that point and 140, something like that. And that's it. Your job is just to push that number down. So if you come in at 140 and you and your partner said 155, you did a hell of a deal. The problem is when you guys chase the MAO and you start with it because you just want to get a yes off the bat, you're, you're dead. There's nowhere to go with the conversation because okay. you're scared you're going to get rejected with the go for no. The key is you have to build rapport, have a conversation and go, listen, I know Rick's a little bit nuts. That's why I'm here talking to you. And I get it. I, you know what? That's why I leave him in the off and you got to just separate. Like I'm on your side. I want to make this work. You need to get the house sold. We obviously have the cash for it. You said this. And then once they give their number, you just, you just kind of go back and you just massage, you keep massaging it and you just keep testing it. Yeah. And here's what they do. They look at like what you discounted and you look what they come down. So if she went to 200 and now she goes 195, we're not getting anywhere. And I'm not going to waste my time with that person. But once they go, listen, I can't go below 146 because I owe this, this, or this, and that. Now I have all the Intel. If I listen really good, now I can probably okay. put the perfect offer yeah. and do another trial close and do it. So let's try it one more way. You ready for this? Uh, let's do one where we do, um, uh, let's, let's do, uh, do you know the scrunchy face close? I don't think I'm good at it. <laughs> okay. So this one, it worked really well for me to fit my personality. So a scrunchy face, every negotiation, when it gets down to the numbers, it's tense. No matter what it is, it's yeah. what, if you're buying some of the store or you're buying a piece of like you get into this tension. And so the weird thing is the seller feels your tension and they feel like you can actually upset a seller by you being all clammy and tight. So one of the ways to do it is I, I was taught this um, a long time ago by Peter Conte, a really good um, creative finance um, 
um, real estate. And by the way, guys, everybody learns real estate from someone. If someone says they figured it out on their own, they're full of crap. So <laughs> back in the days I went and I went in the intense workshop and they just taught you the scrunchy face thing. And by the way, they use it in all industries. It just says, uh, when you make an offer, uh, make the uncomfortable part and put it on your shoulders and wear it for your seller. That's it. So say you're at the point and wow. she's like, well, you know, Rick, make me an offer. I go, ah, you know, I kind of thought about it. It's hard to come up with the numbers. I know you said like 200, but like, like 110, like, is that something you'd be interested? So you can go either way with it. She can tell you, you know, F you get out of my house. I go, I, I didn't think you were going to take that. And that's why I just kind of like, it was just hypothetical. So it's, you ever make a joke with someone? Yeah. You know what they say when people make a joke, right? What's the saying when someone tells you a joke? It's just a joke. <laughs> There's always some truth behind people's joke. Yeah. That's why they made the day. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So it's the same thing with that. So when you do the scrunchy face, you're like, you know, I don't know. We take a hundred grand for it. I'm just stabbing the dark and shut your mouth. You would be shocked what people will say to you. And if they say no to you, you go, that's what I thought. Okay. So when yeah. you do the scrunchy face, you take all the pressure and you kind of put it on yourself. And they're like, okay. they want to try to help you out. And they're like, yeah. they go, but listen, if you could do like 145, like we might be able to do a deal. I go, once again, scrunchy face, like, <laughs> wow. You know, it's kind of a bigger number than what I wanted to do. Um, and then that's when I'll start negotiating. Hey, what if I paid closing costs? What if I did this? So you should always know what your MAO is, but that MAO has to stay yeah. internally to you and you can never share it with anybody. As bad as you want to share it, because you both are playing poker and it's just the truth. The problem is that they play too extreme poker. You're going to have to play the game and you're actually going to have to walk away from it and come back to get a really good deal. Mm -hmm. So by the way, I don't play poker. I suck at it. <laughs> and uh, I, I feel like I gamble full time, although I know the house odds, so I'm okay with it. With poker, I have have no competitive advantage and uh, I can't do it. So, so we just taught you, we did the scrunchy face. We did oh. the bad cop. I'm going to save one more for someone else. Sure. Is there anything else I can help you out with Jesus? Uh, honestly, no, but uh, I'm going to keep in contact because I'm, I'm, I'm going to call this uh property in a, uh... Toby and I have a good feeling. So okay, we'll make uh, it work, to you man. Tomorrow. You, you, you know how yeah. to get a hold of me, man. Like yes. you know. So uh -huh. I appreciate you doing that. So I guys, I want you to understand is one of the biggest problems seeing wholesaling is you guys are really good at building rapport. You're really good at qualifying. Uh, everyone's very nervous about getting the negotiating part. So you just have to have a trigger to go for it. And here's another little tip: when you guys get nervous and you know you're getting close to the uh, negotiation, you'll start talking more and you won't shut up. And so what you have to do is kind of have a trigger switch. So here's what I tell a seller after 10, 15 minutes tops, I go, listen, I could talk to you all day about your kids. And I promise you when we're done dealing with the house, we'll continue that conversation. It really like they go, oh yeah, that'd be great. But remember, I'm here to see if I can help you out with your house, regardless of which way you go, I'm going to help you if I buy it or not. And then you just get in the numbers and just go with it. So make, if you're talking too much, go, listen, I could talk all day. And I promise you at the end of the day, I will, we'll go outside and we'll continue this awesome conversation if I buy your house or not. <laughs> so you do a little bit of a takeaway and then you go yeah. into it. You're going you're, you're gonna to get beat up. They're going to get beat up a little bit. And then either you walk out with a deal or not. And by the way, guys, when people say no to you, they, they tend to do you a favor. The worst ones in the world are the maybes. And you have to do the upfront conversation just like we teach over at freewholesaling.com. So thank you, Jesus. Make sure I would practice those too. They're very good Florida techniques. I don't know why they work really well in Florida, but they work okay. all over the country. <laughs> I've done a lot more than the state of Florida. So keep doing it and working on it. And remember, yeah. you have to get to the negotiating part to start negotiating. You have to start it. And the only way you start it is you have to have a very awkward conversation and go, listen, would you take a hundred? Do you scrunch your face? Good cop, bad cop. Okay. Then. Um, I got a lot more in the, in the pipeline, but yeah. once you do that conversation, <laughs> conversation get out you can decide if you're going to go and move on with this person or not sometimes it doesn't work out but that's why we qualify and we have the right list up front most of the time it just comes down will they give you a good deal and remember 70 percent of our deals are on the follow-up so even when they don't take your deal it doesn't mean you're not going to get it it just needs it needs more work and more time okay so um one of the other ones is uh so are you comfortable in the transition to um the, the biggest challenge everybody i talk to is just getting down to like the negotiations without making it feel like this terrible tense situation so you know what I'm talking about, right? Yes. So one of my favorite one is, and this one's extremely common, when they just won't give you a price. But you know there is motivation there. Maybe it's a foreclosure, pre-foreclosure. Maybe the house is completely trashed and they moved out. And they get to that, they're like... 
well, you know, just uh, Equivian, just uh, give me your offer. And they just like, it gets really weird. Because listen, guys, in the perfect world, your seller gives you the first offer. Like, don't give me, I'm a big fan of that because it makes it a lot easier. But there's a big percentage of people out there that were taught whoever speaks first, you lose. And I'm here to tell you, that's not necessarily true. That's an old wise tale. It is helpful, but you've got to be smarter than the average person and go, okay, how can I get an answer out of this person if they won't give me an answer? And you just have to play around with your words and you have to trick them subconsciously. So if you want to practice this, I don't know if you've ever heard of this one or how we do it. We just call it the volley method. And if, if you ever played any type of, I guess it's like tennis, volleyball, or like ping pong. When you hit it over, the other person's job is they have to hit it back over to you or they lose a point. And that's how I like when you look at people that won't give you an answers, you're going to have to play with them to get them to give you an answer. So if the property's motivated, by the way, I don't do this. If they're not motivated, I won't even waste my time doing this one because this is a nightmare for retail people. They're crazy. So they go, I get down to it. I said, you know, hey, I like everything about your property um, and no one will spit a number out. So you haven't spit out a number. She won't spit out a number. He won't number. Like, how do you do this? And I always teach you the volley method. If you ask them enough questions, they eventually have to give an answer because they get frustrated. So, um, so let's pretend this. Um, why don't I do this? You're you're going to come in and like you've you've qualified everything. You know I'm not talking much and I'm just being super quiet. And you're getting a little bit frustrated with me. So now you have to try to do the volley method. So the whole point of the volley method is when they ask when they answer a question and they don't answer it, you have to serve them back. And all you do is rephrase the question and you put another spin on it. If you ever went to a Tony Robbins seminar, that will drive you nuts with this technique. Because if you learn, if you want to buy time, you just take that person's question or answer and you just rephrase it and then you add whatever you want on the end of it. So like, here's an example of it. Um, Mr. Seller, what, uh, Mr. Seller, what do you need to get for this house? And then, so let's do it the other way around. I'm going to let you do it. So, um, you're going to ask me, Hey, seller, what do you need to get? What do you need to get out of this house? Because that's, that's where I love to do it. So tell me it. Okay. So if I were to close this in about 30 days, what price would you need to be at for this for, to work for you? I don't know. You're the professional. Why don't you give me the number? So th well, this uh, is it. So now, so you you have a choice. You can sit there and stare at them and like just want to punch them in the face, or you have to play with them. So Tony Robbins taught me this technique 15 years ago. Instead of confronting people, dance with them. So I'm terrible at dancing. I'm one of the worst dance partners you'll ever meet. But instead of fighting with them, just play with the flow. So it went over the net. I said, I don't know. You tell me. And now, if you keep going back, they are uh, they are under an urgent situation to answer you. And here's how. I respond to this. You ready? Listen, listen, Sue, I know you don't know, but if you did know what price do you think you need to sell it for? Did I ask her any different? It's the same question. I just changed the wording around. And what happens after a while, she'll get frustrated and answer it. It just out of pure necessity to shut you up. And I know it's a little bit devious, but it works. By the way, I've gone six and seven times doing that. And all you have to do is practice. Now, please guys, do not use this on the ladies because I don't want to come back. And if you use it two or three times, they'll figure out what you're doing and it will blow up in your face. So um, um, like, here's an example. You ready for this? Um, my wife does this to me all the time. Hey, honey, uh, where, uh, l let's just go out to eat tonight. Where do you want to eat? I don't know. Whatever you suggest. And she'll go, well, what What if we go over to, uh, I don't know, uh, Chili's? I'm like, yeah, Chili's is fine. She's like, you know, I'm not sure if I'm feeling Chili's. Do you want to go to another place? I go, honey, I just answered the question. And so you can either decide to get in a confrontation or you just playfully just keep kicking the can back and forth. After two churndowns, they're going to want to try to answer you with the right question because that's how they're wired in life for. So you're going to do the. So I'm going to tell you, you, you've just asked me, what do you need to get out of this house? And I'm going to go back to you. You know, I don't know. You're the professional. You tell me. So now you're going to just rephrase the question. You're going to exact the exact same question. You just take their words and play with it. I know you don't know, but if you did know, what do you think that price would be? And then guess what? When I do that, I'm going to come back to you and go, well, I go, you called me. You're the one who reached out with me a postcard. I like you. But once again, I'm going to defer to you. So now you can't say the same thing. So you got to go, listen, I tell you what, just pie in the sky numbers. Just give me a ballpark of what you need to get out of this to see if I can even do a deal with you. So now I'm going to pull back a little bit and I'm just going to rephrase it. After two times, 90% of the people will answer you just out of frustration. But the problem is when I shoot it over your bow, the reason they give you that answer is they're trying to blow you off and see if you're going to go away. And if you've ever met a, like a really, now I always say, Wholesaling is not sales, but when it comes to this part, it's just knowing how to rephrase the question and keep bouncing it. 
So what you need to do is practice with someone that you can keep bouncing because there's something in human nature when I can give you an instant answer, even though it's complete BS, like it's not a lie, but it's just, I just rephrased the question is they feel a lot higher degree of confidence in you. I know you don't know it, but if you did know, what would, what would the price be? Go listen, Rick, I really don't know. Like I I'm in the clue on it and I just go, listen, all you have to do is ballpark it. There's no pressure here. Honestly, I got to find out if I can even buy the house. So I do a little bit of takeaway and after you do it at least twice, 90% of of the time they're going to give you an answer every time. Here's the problem though. And I'm not picking on you. Like I'm just, this is a great learning thing is if you sit there and just stare at them and you don't know how to answer them, it's very weird and uncomfortable. And remember we've broken the rapport barrier and we're having a conversation, but this is the point where it can get a little bit challenging. So if you're okay with that, remember a volley is just rephrasing the question and basically asking the same things, just adding some words in there. So you don't ask the same thing. Cause if I ask you, no, 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 Beth, Janet, whatever, what's really your price. Now you're going to tick people off. So let's Let's try it. So all you have to do is a lot of times is when they tell you the question, you can use the first part of how they answer it to restructure it. So she goes, I don't really know you're the professional. I go, I'm far from the professional and I know you don't know, but if you did know what price would make this work for you? All I did was take the first part of her question. And then I put a little bit of a spin on it. I just asked the exact same question. So you okay? You want to practice it? And by the way, you can't get this wrong. There's no pressure here. By the way, I learned this technique over 12 years. I didn't pick it up in like a day or two. I just, I find that dead time is either your dead silence in a negotiation, which is very effective, or you have to talk and you can't say the same thing over and over because it sounds desperate. Hold on one second. Uh, Sorry, I got some company in the studio. So you want to give it a shot? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So uh, where is it? So you basically say, listen, you know, what do you need to get out of the property? So you just spit that out. I'm just like, listen, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I think you're the professional. I think you probably know the best price to offer me. What do you think? I know you don't know, but if you had a price range, where would you be at for this to work? You asked some hard questions. You know, I just, it's, it's a very, like, it's a, like, I don't know. I could be like all over the board and I don't want to screw up this deal with you. So can you just like give me a number it might be easier for both of us and then uh will i just rephrase it again after that re- and the, the thing is you can buy time while you're talking remember you're, you're just kind of you're just rephrasing the question there's no wrong answer but what happens when you get into this thing and you don't answer back and you let 30 seconds go by it turns really like you lose a lot of progress in your rapport building skills so think you guys have to think about when you're talking to your buddies you never have dead space when you're talking to your friends like you guys can spit it off even if you don't know the answer because you're extremely comfortable with them. So you got to stop worrying about like analyzing every word. You're never going to say it perfect. They're just looking to see if you're going to continue the conversation. And when you keep asking somebody the same question three or four different ways, by the way, this is a trick lawyers use when they do depositions. Ask me how I know. It works extremely effective. So stop worrying about the exact words you use. All it is is a volley. And sometimes you might even say the wrong words and it's okay. So the first one you said, I know you don't know, but if you did know, what would it be? And so all you are is rephrasing what they said and putting a final spin on it on the same question. So on the third one, I might use an example like, um, so she just came back and gave you like a BS answer. Like, oh my, like I, you're the professional. I go, listen, even professionals screw this up. If you just tell me what you want, this will probably be easier for both of us because maybe I can get you what you're asking. It's a little bit of a shocking answer, but honestly, like, here's what I tell you. If you just tell me the truth, we can cut to the chase. Well, however you have to keep playing with the words, but I'm telling you after two tries, they'll typically go under your spell. Life is all about hypnosis, guys. Either you're being hypnotized or someone's hypnotizing you. By using this words, you're dancing with them and you're playing with them. It's not bad. It's better than the, what's the, what's the, I'm sorry, I can't give you more than 110,000 for it. You're never going to get anywhere doing this. So if they're qualified, the properties are fit and they're playing around with the numbers, you, you can't do it. And then after three times they completely reject you, you got to kind of stop. And then you just go straight to the low bull offer. Go out. Well, Cause honestly, it makes it easier. So pretend she rejected you three times. She's like, I don't know. I don't know. Ballpark. I don't know. And I go, well, listen, if you're not going to give me a number, I'm throwing one out there. Don't shoot messenger. Would you consider a hundred thousand dollar offer and just kind of scrunch your face? Cause now you have a reason to give her a low ball offer. Cause she won't give you a starting number and you have to, because if she gives you a pie in the sky number, where are you going to go with it? And so what's your, what's your excuse? If she goes, are you, you crazy? Did you not get any sleep last night? Do you know what number you just told me? How do you respond? 
I was just tell her that uh, I was just throwing a price out there just to see where she would be at. Correct. So this is where you bring in your motion. Go listen. Like you didn't give me a number. I got to start somewhere. Tell tell me what you're thinking. How did that make you feel? And they'll go pissed off. Okay. Well, just that's why I was trying to find out what number you need to make this work. Have you talked it over with your husband or your significant other, whatever? And just like you're always looking to get a counter. I the last thing I want is just a pure number. I want to hear things like I spoke it over with my mom and we agree we can't take anything less than $155,000 because this is what we need to get over here and do that. It's like, oh crap, now I have all the information I need. Now I can figure out if I can structure an offer. And guys, that's it. When you start with your MAO, it's a disaster. So let's try it once again from start to finish. And the idea is to help everybody understand this because you guys are really good at rapport in the conversation. When it comes to like the negotiation, a lot of you are like a deer in the headlights. I Because I've been on the phone with a bunch of you guys when we're talking to them. you got to keep that conversation piece going no matter how stupid the conversation is. Conversations are fluid and flowing, right? So you got to look at it like a river and stop worrying about making mistakes. And sometimes you can just pause and go, my God, what's the price? Let me think about this. And you can take time to do it instead of just saying, um, ah, and just staring at someone. So it's very awkward. Have you ever been in a room with someone and make an offer on the phone and you get that just weird awkwardness on the negotiations? No, I haven't experienced that. Okay. It's terrible. It's, it's not fun. So let's try it from start to finish. You ask me, go ahead. Hey, what do you need to get for this price, Rick? Hey, what would you need for this house? I don't know. I figured I'd, I would kind of leave it to you. You can make the offer and we'll see if it works. Well, if you had a price in your head, what would you need to work for this? You know, I've, I haven't really overly thought about this myself too much, but like, what would you recommend? I would recommend, uh, I'm not the best at the numbers. Uh, that's really my partner thing. Uh, so I think if you told me a price, then I would be able to give you a price, a counter offer. So that's perfect. So like uh, guys, even like that, as long as you have the back and forth, it's a conversation. It's not a like, let's fight each other till we get what we need to do. Because like you're perfectly like, like so, I don't know, but like listen to the key words I said. I personally haven't completely thought about it, which means she's talked to someone else about it. Who else have you talked to about like coming? up for the right uh, for what you need to get out of the house always use the word need because if they have a want i can't fulfill it a need i can fulfill a one i can't do it so sometimes if so the skill set of using your ear when she says that i'm like okay she's got an opinion but someone else is leaning in her ear it could be a husband it could be a business partner or anything like that and just use the signs of doing it i'll go well listen let me ask you whoever you've talked to what what number have you guys come to a conclusion on and then you can see if you can wreck the fire with it but the idea is you keep the flow going by the third time, they'll always give you a price. And if someone just stone calls you like this, you probably got to go back to report and figure out what's going wrong with it. And that's how all negotiate. Guys, you don't start negotiation until you hit them with like a low ball number. Because if you hit them with the MAO, you can't negotiate anymore. It's over. Like, what are you going to do? What are you going to go to 151, 152? Like it's, it gets ridiculous. And that when people say, hey, I want to meet you in the halfway. Like I know there's a book on splitting the difference. I heard it's a really good book. But like when we're talking wholesale numbers, sometimes splitting the difference is a really good deal. If you start with the go for no, it usually works. If you start with the MAO, it's a nightmare. So um, I appreciate you uh, working along with it. You got a question I can help you answer? Yeah, actually, just a quick question. Yeah. Um, so when you file for like the code violations in like different townships and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, do they actually check your home address? Because I had, uh, I've got the code violations for my city, yeah. but when I get like the outskirts, I put my address and it was like, uh, we can't give you the code violations because it's not an address in our township. So I was wondering, do they look up your address or? You're talking about your personal address? Yeah. Um, I mean, that's just BS stuff. Like, I, I don't know why that would matter. But r once again, the argument here is always, it's going to be versus um, um, public information, which you're talking about co-violations, right? Co-violations. Yeah. So we all agree it's public information. The problem you're trying to penetrate is the privacy policy of that township or city. And that's where a lot of people go, I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to file a FOIA act and they have to cooperate. Well, the problem is they write these ridiculously privacy policies. Um, it's like the gym I go to, there's, there's like a, a general manager. He's a pain in the butt, like nightmare. He doesn't own the gym. He just gets a paycheck, but he literally tells everybody what they can do, how you can drop away. It's like super annoying. So if you don't appease to the general manager, you're never going to get like the full access, like to the gym. So when it comes to any type of town, especially code violation, 
information. You have the public information. I'm here to tell you guys, do not try to win that debate because you're wasting your time because filing a FOIA act is a nightmare. This particular issue is probably a little privacy thing they put in to, to filter people out. So you're either just going to have to flat out trick them. I'm not a big fan of lying to people. Or you have to decode what their privacy policy is and figure if you can get around that. I've never personally happened to have them. That's the first I've ever. I've been flat out denied, which I think is even worse. So go get a buddy's address. <laughs> She's probably just putting in a computer and disqualifying you right off the bat. Right. So go get another address. I like, how are they going to correlate you to that address? Are they really going to go that far? Because remember, you don't have to own a property to live there. You could just be leasing it out. And to be honest, anybody can write a lease. There's no way to verify it. So figure out what their privacy policy is. And once you understand the rules, then you can navigate around it. It's just like paying your taxes or if you want to play the game of Monopoly. He or she that reads and understands the rules will do the best, period. I've, did, I, I tell, I've had a 12-year-old kick my butt in Monopoly. You know why? Because the kid knew every rule in Monopoly. <laughs> guess You can guess who that was. And I still won't play him to this day. Zachary's just, he'll destroy you in Monopoly. Like I, I probably should have never brought that game out as a kid. So I'm telling you guys, if you just read the rules, it's crazy because you should buy, and once you played Monopoly enough, you learn like you just buy everything you can and be cash poor as long as you can. And if you can hold out about four trips around the board, you own everybody. And all, all Monopoly is trying to teach everybody in this world is if you sacrifice now, the bounties are endless in the future. That's all Monopoly is. Like it took me 35 years to understand the game of Monopoly. And most people pay Monopoly like, eh, I'm just going to do like the whole idea is to own the board and make everybody pay you. It's, it's like a dig to the man. You know what I'm saying? So it's, uh, it's a privacy policy. So just like figure out what it is and figure out how to penetrate it. And that's all you need to do. Don't try to like rationalize the rules. They're ridiculous because it's some manager sitting in an office and like, how can I discourage less people like you calling and asking for this list? And they go, well, make sure they live in this town first. I'm here to tell you, there's no way they can verify where you live. You could write a lease tomorrow. Like, what are they going to do? Then they have to, are they really going to go through that much underwriting to figure it out? I don't think they will. I think they'll give up. So it's just an initial filter. Just find a way to get through it. So I have not heard that, but am I surprised by it? Absolutely not. Okay. People are crazy. These privacy policy guys, they're getting nuts. We're having the same issue in our business too. It's like, guys, I've been coming here for 15 years. Like who, and like, so every time we switch a new employee, we have to deal with it. So anything else? No, that's all I have for now. You got it. So I appreciate you. So I'm just teaching you guys that how you overcome anybody, any motivated seller is you just got to get to the negotiation part and you got to find a tactful way to do it. And when they start stone calling you, you got to have techniques in your bag and just practice them. See, I'm telling you, volleying, it's one of the most powerful things you can ever do. It drives people nuts. And guys, next time you're at a party, play with it. You don't even have to do this in real estate. You do it with all your friends and stuff. Just don't do it with your significant other. That's the one that will blow up on you. I tried it. She goes, I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. You're just rephrasing the question until I give you the real answer. I go, is it working? She goes, now that I know what you're doing, it doesn't work. So the whole point of volleying is get someone's subconscious answer. Because if you ever got frustrated and just tell someone like, I can't go. My mom won't let, like I used to be a kid. Like my friends are like, come on, Rick, we're all going out. Like I can't go. I'm grounded. I'm sorry. I tried to cover it up. I can't, I can't leave. I'm like, okay, well, we got to the truth on that, right? Got to miss the days of being grounded. <laughs> <laughs> no mortgage payment, no financial commitments. I was like, grounding was like a luxury and I didn't even understand it because um, actually when I got grounded is when I found out Tony Robbins because back when I was young, we didn't have the internet. We, we didn't have like, we didn't have smartphones. You just find a book and read it. So I sat down and read a book for four hours. I go, wow, people really live like this amazing stuff. So, okay, bud, let me know if you need anything else. You know where I'm at.